Okay, as you can see, we've made quite a bit of progress. There's a lot of the siding on the trailer. We're actually almost done with the siding on the trailer. So we consulted uh, my wife's father, Robert, who's done a lot of fiberglass and just has a lot of knowledge about a lot of different things. And so um, he recommended we get this roller, which has been super awesome. And we use that roller to stick down all the double-sided tape. And then after we put these panels on here, we rolled that as well. So you're getting a lot of point pressure on each spot rather than just trying to push it and hoping you're getting even pressure anywhere. So huge uh, thing right here to make sure you get really good adhesion with that double-sided tape because obviously you don't want those things moving anywhere. So that's what we've done on all these panels. You can see because of how the fiberglass is going to go on, we wanted this panel in place, but we wanted to mark it out uh, my lovely artwork here. We wanted to mark out where the window was so that we don't waste resin and time here. So we just marked the corners. I used just a standard uh, drywall cutter to get in there so it's about an inch inside of the window so we can do all this and then we'll come back with that same tool after the fiberglass is already on. So these are all overhanging and you'll be able to see that when we go through to the other side. All the plumbing is run. These are the vents that'll come up to the top for the gray water and the black water. We'll see the plumbing inside there. You can kind of see how these bunks are taping, taking shape in the back. Eventually there will be a window here and another window up here that'll be a skylight. So you can see with the insulation in here, what we're really doing, you can see you can push on this, it's really solid. So we're essentially creating a sandwich panel with the ply on the outside and then we've used some quad caulking, again, per Robert's recommendation, really awesome stuff. It secured this in here, and then we'll put ply on the inside, and so I just make this sandwich panel. We will have a little thermal bridging where the steel frame is. We understand that. But the strength and rigidity of the steel frame um, is tremendous. I actually got on here the other side and I, the other day, and I was able to lift up one side, so it's still relatively light yet I was rocking it back and forth and just perfectly rigid from all the cross bracing and everything. Um, so you can really kind of start to see the trailer starting to take shape, what this is going to look like. Um, mounted up the box on the front or framed out the box on the front. So uh, this will be kind of a multi-use box up here. So this side will be kind of our propane and gas and things, and there will be sheet metal dividers in here and sheet metal doors. This is just our frame. So this box here is where the water heater is going on the outside. We're gonna vent that and have a stainless steel uh, exhaust diverter in here to keep any potential carbon monoxide outside of the vehicle. Uh, two propane bottles here that will be connected with this regulator, which is fantastic, it'll automatically switch to the empty one um, when, it, when one runs out, and then you can switch it back to the other one. If you put it down here, it'll drain both at the same time, but if you put it one way, it'll use up one and then switch to the other one, and this will change color. And then it'll actually allow you to detach the one that's empty and go fill it without shutting off any of your propane, which is really a nice feature. Uh, then in this side will be our electrical. So you can see that I've built a battery tray here for two batteries. I've sized it pretty universally. So we're, we're just using flooded lead acid batteries right now because they're cheap. Uh, ultimately, when we've got $1,500 we don't know what to do with, we might buy a couple lithium batteries. But for the time being, we're using the $150 setup of the deep cycle marine batteries. This box you can see is actually stood off from the trailer about a quarter of an inch. So any water that hits here will drain out very easily. Um, this box is removable, so we're gonna take it off to go add all the sheet metal dividers and everything. So this side is the electrical side. So we'll have the solar controller, um, the batteries down here. I may put a shelf in here for some storage up above because obviously we don't need this whole space for that. But we'll kind of see as we go. And then we originally designed this to come up another couple inches and then taper back like this. So we may do some type of sheet metal toolboxes or something up here on top. Probably won't happen for this trip since we're trying to get going pretty quickly. Uh, it may just stay flat for now, but we'll see how much time we get to. So my wife is shaking her head, which means she wants to build those. 
So around here you can see the interior. Uh, because there's no sheeting on this side yet, it's a li little easier to see inside. So you can see this will be the entryway into the trailer. There will actually be a box here, so this sink will open from the outside in a hatch. Our bed will be up here, got our fresh water tank and all of our plumbing. We've made panels that lift up really easily. So if we ever did need to get any of the plumbing, pump, any of that stuff, really easy to just lift this panel up and get to those. So we're looking at where we're gonna put lighting and things like that now. You can see to get into these bunks is gonna be pretty straightforward as well. A little bit of storage underneath the rear bunk. Our max air fan is going right here. Good location to kind of draw air through the entire trailer. And you can see uh, my wife has sanded these edges all kind of rounded these over. So as the fiberglass fabric comes around, it'll wrap around really easily, wrap around these corners. So that is gonna be the next step is fiberglass. So we're getting our respirators ready, getting ventilation ready, hoping for a little warmer weather. Um, it's been about 65 degrees every day and actually rained today. Oddly enough in California in the middle of the summer. So we're hoping it clears up and maybe we get a little sun tomorrow and some warmer weather so our fiberglass will go well. That's where we are right now. Welcome any questions if anybody's got any questions about anything. I just stuck my finger in it again. <laughs> Where's the roller? It's right here. Right. Okay, I think if you line your edge and the top. I'm getting my corner in there first, yeah. right? Yep. Go up a little bit. Up a little bit. Okay, that should be pretty good, right? Standing up so it's like all bowed. 